So we need a classification theorem in order to be able to say what type of critical point we have. We're going to present something that is like the second derivative test from single variable calculus. Now, in order to do that classification, what we're going to do is take a critical point and perturb off of it a little bit by some amount h of vector. We're going to Taylor expand and use what we know about the Taylor series. We've got the zeroth order term, the first order term, the second order term, and then a bunch of other stuff that we're just going to throw into a higher order trash can using big O notation. Now, what do we know? At a critical point, the derivative vanishes. So that first order term is completely gone. Because the zeroth order term is just the height, that means that the second order terms dominate the local behavior of the function. So what we're going to say is that if that second order term is positive for all non-zero h, then that implies that we have a local minimum. Get it? A positive second derivative, local minimum, just like single variable calculus. And likewise, if that second order term is always negative for h non-zero, this is going to imply that our critical point is a local maximum. Again, just like the second derivative test in single variable calculus. But these conditions on these matrices for, for always being positive or always being negative, that's not so obvious or easy to figure out. How do we tell? Well, the real way for one to tell is to use something called eigenvalues, which we have not and will not learn. But if you want something that is simple, that is workable, I can tell you how to do this in 2D using something called the trace determinant method. It's a little bit of a hack, but I don't want to do eigenvalues yet. You'll get to that later in life. In the 2D case, there are two numerical quantities that determine the type of critical point. Let's say that our second derivative is um, uh, matrix A, B, C, D. The first of these quantities is the determinant, A, D minus B, C. You remember that from volume one. The second is going to be new to you. This is something called the trace of the matrix. The trace is A plus D, the sum of the diagonal terms. These two numerical quantities determine whether you have a local max, a local min, even a saddle point. Now to explain how this works, I'm going to assume that I have a diagonal matrix where it's obvious to see what type of critical point we have. This method will work for non-diagonal matrices as well. Okay, so let's say that I have a diagonal matrix with one of the entries positive, the other entry negative. That's obviously a saddle point, and that has a negative determinant. No matter what, I've got to have a negative determinant there. So if, on the other hand, I have positive entries along the diagonals, that's a local minimum. That has positive determinant, but also positive trace. Now, if I had a diagonal matrix with all negative terms, that would be a local maximum. Again, it would have a positive determinant, but it would have negative trace. This is why we need those two quantities, determinant and trace. Now, I've argued this in the case of a diagonal matrix, but here's the thing. It works even in the non-diagonal case. The trace and the determinant completely classify critical points in two D. So that's the idea. That's the method. Let's formalize this in terms of an algorithm that you can apply when you're working with a max min problem in 2D. Again, assume that you've got a critical point for a function, two inputs, one output. Negative determinant, you got a saddle. Positive determinant, now you have to compute the trace. If the trace is positive, you have a local min. If the trace is negative, you have a local max. If this test fails, if the determinant is equal to zero, then you have a degenerate critical point. Then it's like the second derivative test has failed. This is how the second derivative test works for functions in 2D. If you want to do higher dimensions, you can do it, but you have to learn some more math. If we go back to our standard example that we looked at, x cubed plus y cubed minus 3xy, then we can verify that this works. 
The second derivative in this case is the matrix 6x, negative 3, negative 3, 6y. At 1, 1, that local minimum, we evaluate that to 6, negative 3, negative 3, 6. At 0, 0, it evaluates to 0, negative 3, negative 3, 0. In the case of 1, 1, the determinant is clearly positive, and the trace is equal to 12. That is also positive. That means we have a local minimum. If we move to the origin, consider the second derivative there, that has negative determinant. Boom, that means you've got a saddle, no more work left to be done. Now we already knew this because we graphed out this function, examined it locally, but now we see how we can do it algebraically without having to graph anything. This is going to be very useful to you when you're working on Maxman problems.